everybody this is Scott from the old curiosity shop and it's time to review another flea market thrift haul and so let's dive in and see what we've got I just about got detached retina again when I walked into a flea market last Saturday you never find Fenton jadeite or jade or clam broth dishes like this at flea markets you just don't this stuff is hard find. Uh, these plates are the Elizabeth pattern and they were only produced by Fenton from 1930 to 1933. Just very limited production and only produced for three years. These three or four luncheon plates are in excellent shape. And if you'll recall from, I don't know, my last, maybe the video before my last, I talked about my small collection of Fenton uh, jadeite or jade rather I keep calling it jadeite Fenton called it jade and their clam broth uh, items so I don't really think I have to do a little more research but I have a feeling that the little sherbet dishes might not be Fenton now this is definitely Fenton in the uh, Elizabeth pattern as I said the nice thing about the tumblers and the sherbets and everything else is that the base to the glass was jet black, so it was a really nice combination of green and black. These bases uh, are not in the Elizabeth shape, and they're not black. So these might be from a different company, just sort of put together. But anyway, um, real excited to find them and might hold on to, might hold, I might hold on to them. Back there, yep, that's a big peach luster, fire king, mid-century punch bowl. There are eight cups and the punch bowl with no damage on any of it. The cups are uh, unmarked. I don't think Fent, uh, I don't believe that Fire King marked the bottom of these. Now, what I like about this set is it's small. I guess that's about a, oh, that's about a 10 inch. They came almost twice as big as that with like 12 and 16 cups. This is a real manageable size. It's not huge. It only has eight cups. I also like it because it does not say eggnog or Tom and Jerry, or it doesn't have ivy leaves painted on it. Now, I don't have anything against those other things, but obviously eggnog, you're not really going to be using that year round with the word eggnog on it, but well, I suppose you could. I just happen to pref prefer this one in the plain style without any decoration on it. Made in the 1950s, as cool as it is, not huge value on these because, you know, folks just don't entertain with punch bowls anymore. That's an old fashioned style of entertaining and, and most folks just don't entertain with punch bowls. But um, still, online I should be able to get 30 or 40 bucks for it. Uh, haven't decided yet. Back there is the 1930s radio lamp, small figural lamp, and uh, let me turn it off. 
I will, it's an elephant. So I don't know how well you can see that. It is a porcelain elephant or a ceramic black elephant. He's unmarked on the bottom. I have a feeling he's American made. Uh, yes, it would have had some type of a parchment lampshade on it. These small figural lamps were very popular in the 19, late 20s and early 30s, and they were often referred to as radio lamps. The big console radios were in style at that time, and people would put small lamps like this on their radios, and they were advertised as radio lamps. The elephant is in excellent shape. Uh, I, of course, as you know me, I re where is it? There it is. I rewired it with an old uh, reproduction cloth cord and, as usual, a nice antique uh, Bakelite socket put on there. So, this elephant lamp has been returned to its 19, circa 1930 style. And, okay, moving along right there is a wall pocket from the 1940s or 50s. I really like the pastel colors of it in the shape of an old iron. There's where you would hang it on the wall. It still has some dirt in it. See that? The old dirt? Woohoo! So, uh, you could hang it on the wall and put a piece of ivy in it. Very popular item from the 40s. Here's a little 1930s Art Deco nut dish, candy dish, or uh, dish for whatever condiment happens to be your favorite. I put oyster crackers in it. It's A lot of times you'll see these little dishes and they have come away from their chrome. I'm not going to pull this out. It's unmarked. The chrome, the stainless steel or the chrome is unmarked. The dish is unmarked. Anybody could have made it. But it really dates to the 1930s when cobalt blue glass was, was very popular and a uh, very inexpensive item. And I'll probably sell that for about $15 or so online. Here in the front I have a collection of mottos. Now this one you saw in one of my old videos and I said I was going to keep it. Well, I did keep it, but I pulled it back out to put it with this larger collection. I'm not going to read these, but mottos came in these little frames. You would buy these at the 5 and 10 cent store. Uh, some of them are dated. This one is not. I don't really need a date because I know from the frame and the style that this is somewhere between 1925 and 1935. Original back on it. It always came with a little hook to hang it. And you would, you know, this is the equivalent of, uh, gosh, what's the, what would be the equivalent today? Well, I guess they still kind of sell things like this in Hallmark stores uh, today. Here's one that's dated 1925. And then this one over here is dated 1926. That's called the Memory Trail. There's one to Mother, which would have been Happy Mother's Day to uh, mothers that are watching. I love the old cottages and the old sort of storybook architecture of the houses that were depicted. You often see that in the graphics of that era. Yes, people collect these. In fact, a buddy of mine who lives here in Philly he, his whole bathroom is decorated with these. He must have a hundred of them. And they're all placed meticulously on the wall like a, like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, so it's a small collectible. They're very affordable. If you ever pick any up, make sure in your listing you call them a motto because that's the search word that folks use. See? M-O-T-T-O. Motto. Uh, here we have... Do you recognize these? Well... It has something to do with McKee, and it has something to do with Jeanette. Well, they're glass bake, and there are eight of them. Move cord. And they're all in this, mm, what kind of green is that? Forest green? I don't know. But we'll turn it over and we'll look at the bottom. We see it does clearly say USA glass bake. Now notice glass bake is spelled G-L-A-S. It doesn't have two S's. Uh, B-A-K-E and then there's a production number or a model number or whatever that number means for glass bake. Glass bake is usually a milk glaze, milk glass or an opaque white glass base like that with a fired on color. 
The Fire Dawn color is pretty good. There are some little, those aren't chips in the glass. It's just little losses to the Fire Dawn color. And that happens. Now, there's not any serious loss to any of these. Um, they're cute little casserole, I guess you'd call them individual casserole dishes. I suppose everybody could get their own little macaroni and cheese or baked beans or whatever you wanted to do with them. The McKee Company actually introduced glass bake in 1917 and they were trying to compete with Pyrex, of course made by uh, Corning. Then around 1953, the McKee Company was sold to the Thatcher Glass Company and then later the Thatcher Glass Company was sold to Jeanette somewhere in the early 60s. Glass bake that was made by Jeanette after 1961 usually has a J prefix, prefix right before the number. So we don't see the J prefix here, and I know this is before 1961 anyway, but after 1961 you'll see a J, and that's when, uh, after Thatcher sold McKee to Jeanette. You following this? You need a roadmap? All right, so, um, and oftentimes there's a bubbly, pebbly bottom to glass bake, but sometimes it's just smooth. I kind of call glass bake the, and I don't even know if you're allowed to use this term anymore, it might not be polite, but kind of the red-headed stepchild, and pardon me if you're not supposed to say that anymore, um, or maybe kind of the, the distant cousin to Pyrex and Fire King. It's just not as well liked or collected by most folks. For whatever reasons, hey, there's no accounting for taste. But these little guys are cute. There are eight of them. And we'll sell them. No, they're not eight of them. There are ten of them. I can't even. One, two, three, four. Okay, two times five is ten. There's ten of them. And I'll probably sell them in sets of five. We'll see if I can get 20 bucks per set. Might be able to do that. They're cool. I haven't researched this guy. I picked him up only because, or girl, because it's retro looking. I like the 50s graphics on there. Rice Krispies. Who made it? Vintage, oh, vintage Kellogg's. So, uh, no clue what it sells for. Five bucks, uh, maybe. And again, I just got it because I liked the vintage look of it. These over here, I had to do some research. I have four of these. I'd never seen them before. It doesn't mean anything, just means I haven't seen them. You can see the Campbell Soup Cans. And then over here, Andy Warhol. They're not marked on the bottom anywhere, I don't think. No. They're pretty heavy, and I think these are what's called a double old-fashioned, uh, I think. My drinking friends will have to tell me. But anyway, I found out they're made by the Block China Company, which acquired a license in the late 90s to manufacture items with the Andy Warhol uh, artwork. So these date to about 1997, so they're 20 years old. I did actually find out that they sell for, a set of four of them should sell for about 24 bucks. So I was pleased to see that. You know what, I'm not telling you what I paid for anything. All right, I'll go back and do that at the end, I promise. Anyway, uh, these should sell for about 20, 24 bucks or so for the four of them. And the whole martini culture and everything was, was getting popular again in the 90s and that company was, made this whole line. Uh, I guess they made Pilsner glasses and Tom Collins glasses and martini glasses, all with that sort of Andy Warhol stuff on it. Yes, I am finding this all over the place now. This time, uh, Indiana glass tumblers, which this is the first time I've seen the tumblers. I've already sold my goblets in Harvest Gold. I still have four of the green uh, wine goblets or just goblets. And now I have four Harvest Gold uh, big tumblers. And these dudes are heavy. Uh, 1960s, 70s, but people are still into this kind of second generation carnival glass. And uh, even though it's not necessarily my favorite, it sells and it's still kind of pretty. I picked up two Godiva mugs. They should sell at, for about six bucks each. And they say Godiva 1926 on both sides. I don't know who made it. <laughs> California Pottery made it. 
in China, <laughs> California, China, and then a Hershey's mug, uh, which I don't know either. That is not Candlewick. This one is not old and I think it's made in China, but I picked it up very inexpensively and I liked how small it is. It's a very small, manageable uh, sort of cake plate or, or how, how, whatever you wanted to put on it. And it just appealed to me. I don't usually buy clear glass, but I think for f folks who collect uh, Candlewick, this might be a nice piece to accompany some of the Candlewick pieces that they already have. On to some of the non-glass items. Here's a antique oak ringer box. As you know, early telephones didn't have bells included inside the case in the design. You would often have with candlestick telephones a separate ringer box or subset, and that's what this is. So this one is in super nice condition. Wow. Let me try to get it out of there. It has, oops. Oh. Hello, hello. Can't tell who made it because most of the label is gone. Something switchboard and supply company. It dates to 1910 to about 1920. Really nice look on those uh, nickel plated bells. And uh, the innards are all there and someone has actually rewired it. And I took this apart and looked on the inside. They did, they did it right. They knew what they were doing. They didn't disturb the antique innards, but they modified it so that it can be used. So someone can plug this in and receive calls on it. That should sell for between 60 and $80, depending. What's really nice is uh, the, on many of these, the dovetailed corners uh, are straight. This one has a really nice bevel to it, or rounded, uh, rounded edge, which makes it a little bit nicer. There's a 1930s uh, reverse painted frame, cheap, cheaply made frame, probably sold at Woolworths for 25 cents, maybe 10 cents. But you wanna make sure that they have the backs, if you can, which this one does. And it's reverse painted, meaning that black is actually painted on the glass, but the silver is a, uh, what do you call it? A, an insert, a cardboard insert. People love these 1930s frames. That one's not particularly all that Art Deco, but that'll still sell for about $12 or so. Here's a set of men's collars, probably circa 1920 or, or earlier. They're arrow collars, they're starched. Of course, they have the sizes on them. That's a 14 and 3 fourths neck. That's the Newport style of the arrow collar. And uh, that one came, and so you would button it on. And then one of them here actually has its, this is a slightly different style without, I don't know, I'm not into necessarily into antique clothing, but I had, anyway, they don't want to come apart. There's the collar pin or the collar button that would actually pin it around your neck. Man, I'm glad we don't wear the, I say we. I know I have pictures of my great grandfather with these things on and ugh, it must have been, I mean, these things are like cardboard. I can't imagine. All right, those should sell for the three of them, maybe 12 bucks or so. I'm not sure about that. And then finally in the front here, I grabbed for $2 this bag of, uh, it was a bag of recipe books. I really got it because the first, I think the first six of them are in a series. Now this series is all from, look at this. Published by the Culinary Arts Institute of Chicago, Illinois. And they're all dated 56, 55, 54, so right in the mid 50s. Look at this. Look how excited they are as she comes flying out with her green bean casserole, no doubt, in glass bake Pyrex or Fire King. Even the dog is happy. Anyway, the graphics are, are funny in here, uh, as I've just shown you a peek. It's really cool to see the way they photographed the food. Fish dinner. Uh, it's fun to read through these. And what we have here is the casserole cookbook. 
there's a whole series. We have elegant desserts. Uh, brunch, breakfast, and morning coffee. How exciting. Quick dishes for the woman in a hurry. I guess the man just gets to sit there. Oh, look at her. She's got her little double, a little her coffee pot back there. Look at the cat. See the cat? And the turquoise blue. Okay, and the chocolate book. Isn't this exciting? All right, so that's, I really got it for that, that set of one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, because they're all in a series. And I think I could sell that series for $15 or so, maybe a little bit more. Uh, the other ones are probably just gonna be, I'll look through them and probably trash them. Most of these are like from the 80s. Nothing special. That looks nasty. Uh, microwave cookbook probably came out in the 80s. Barbecue cookbook. Chocolate fantasies. Ooh, sounds like a late night movie. Uh, dinner, <laughs> Betty Crocker's dinner for two. And the candy cookbook. Anyway, I won't throw them out. I'll probably just, I don't know what I'll do with them. But these are the ones I'm going to sell because they're from the 50s and real vintage. All right, what am I forgetting? I think we've got all of it. That's my thrift haul. Uh, I didn't do my, oh, I did forget something back here. Uh, real quick, I know this looks like a boring book called Our Forester, Kentucky History. Uh, it looks just like an old book, doesn't it? And you would put it on your bookshelf, but, ha ha, that's where we're going to keep our unmentionables. Just make sure, before you put your thousand dollar bills in there, make sure you tell a relative, because if you die and this goes to Salvation Army, there goes all your money. That was really cheap too. Okay, let's go back and do this. Eight dollars for this whole punch bowl. And by the way, the punch bowl has a separate base on the bottom, which is sweet. Isn't that nice? Yeah, eight bucks. Fifteen dollars for all of this. These plates in this pattern are alone worth, believe it or not, about twenty dollars per plate in that rare pattern. I paid $4 for the four of these uh, mottos, that one I already had. This was a dollar. These were 75 cents each for the five of them. 50 cents. These were a dollar each. This was $2. Uh, the, I paid 10 bucks for that elephant lamp, but I'm going to sell it for about 50. A buck each on these. This was $2. The mugs back there were 50 cents each. This was a quarter. I think I told you what that is. I forgot to mention that this is a refrigerator dish by Westinghouse. And if you ever see that W on there, you'll know that stands for, and that's not showing up really well, but it's, there's a W there and it means Westinghouse. You got these when you bought a Westinghouse refrigerator. This one has that sort of yellowish tint to it. It's in excellent shape. There are a lot of these online, they're not rare. Prices are all over the place from five bucks to 30 bucks. That one is probably gonna be a keeper because you know, I don't know if you've ever put spaghetti in Tupperware or in like a used Cool Whip dish, but you know, spaghetti sauce stains plasticware. So it's sometimes cool to have refrigerator dishes like this for things like spaghetti sauce. You probably already knew that. Um, this was sweet, paid five bucks for that. And again, I hope to get 60 or so um, These were cheap. I don't remember and I paid two dot two dollars for this and then finally back here are two sweet sweet photographs I don't buy a lot of vintage photographs uh, The main reason why I bought these two Is because of the subject matter if we zoom in here hold your camera still Scott. All right if I zoom in you'll notice uh, adorable uh, little boy sitting there with his toys we can see on the floor it looks like well, why don't I pull this out really nice interior shot 
We can see on the floor probably a stife bear because of those long arms. Uh, and that's also probably Felix the cat. Felix came out during the silent era. There were some other cats around, but I think that's Felix. And what really set it over the top for me is right behind him. That is a 1926, 27, 28 Crosley radio with a speaker on its original stand. And so for radio collectors, antique radio collectors, they love to find old photographs of people with antique radios in their interior. And that's true of things like old telephones, old, old typewriters, um, old slag glass lamps, anything technological old television sets. When you find interior photographs of old technology, uh, it's they are collectible and they're worth more than just a simple snapshot. So when I go to sell this, uh, a collector of antique radios would love to have this. Also a collector of antique toys. So there's uh, some cross-pollination, if you will, or cross-interest going on here with this old photograph. And it was a buck. And here's his brother, at least I believe it's his brother. They look like they were, the photographs look like they were taken on the same day, but this little boy has on a different uh, outfit. And he still has the radio behind him. We can see Felix the cat and he's playing with his uh, teddy bear. The really cute old photographs from the mid 1920s in their original frames. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I reached 500 subscribers last night and uh, my 500th one was uh, Mrs. Olson. So thank you Mrs. Olson for being number 500 and thank you everybody else who tunes in and watches my videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell button. I didn't do my guess what sold on eBay video last night because I was tuckered out. I'll see if I can get to it later on tonight, and if not, I'll see you when I see you. This is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching, and so long for now.